Shasta go back to Brenda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. Shri Guru Dev Ki Jai. All right. Hare Bo to everybody. So today we're going to talk a little bit about this very special verse that we learned. Smara Garla Kandanam, Mama Sirasi Mandanam, Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. This is one of the sweetest and the most important and well-known phrases of Jayadev Goswami's Gita Govinda. And then we also learned this verse we can say together from Radha Rastra in the D39. You can say this one one time also. Venum karani paditam skalitam shikandam brastam sapita vasanam brajaraja shuno Yasya kataksha saragata vimochitasya tamradikam paricharami karasena. This is from Radha Sudhanidi 39 by Prabodhananda Sarasvatipad. This describes a very sweet pastime we can meditate upon. Both these verses show the supremacy of Shrimati Radhika over Krishna. A Krishna accepts defeat at the powers of Shrimati Radhika. And this is the mood of the Vaishnavas in our line. Not only is it the mood of the Vaishnavas in our line, but it is the actuality, it is the fact that Rup Goswami sings Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Dhaite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite. That Shrimati Radhika is victorious, not only once but twice, all the time. Radhe Jaya Jaya. Jaya means victory. So Radhe Jaya Jaya, victory, victory to Shrimati Radhika, the beloved of Madhava, Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite, who is the crest jewel of all the beautiful young girls in the community of Braj, Mandala Mahite. So, we hear in this Venu Karan verse also that Krishna is overwhelmed by the, said that, like in battle, in the Prem or the battle of love, and Krishna is overwhelmed by the piercing arrows of Shrimati Radhika's sidelong glances. Yasya kataksha saragata vimorchitasya Simply by the yasya kataksha, the sidelong glance of Shrimati Radhika, which are like arrows. This pierces Krishna and as a result, what happens? Venun karan nipaditam, the flute falls from Krishna's hands. Skalitam shikandam, his peacock feather also falls from his turban. Prastam chapita vasanam, his pitambar cloth begins to slip. And then, Yasya Kataksha Sadagata Vimorchitasya Krishna faints simply by that power of Shrimati Radhika. Therefore, Tvam Radhikam Padicharami Karadasena. Therefore, we always pray to be able to worship with love at Shrimati Radhika in our spiritual rasa. So, we're learning about this kind of thing in our Vilakus monthly discussions that how we can aspire to serve Shrimati Radhika what kinds of services we can perform to Shrimati Radhika, what is the relationship between Radha and Krishna and our relationship with them both also. There's another verse we can learn, that we respect Krishna because she is the beloved of Krishna. She is the beloved of, Krishna is the beloved of Radhika and Krishna is Radhika's like beloved. Therefore, we honor Krishna. Marisa Natatbe. But Shrimati Radhika is my Swami. So, our direct affiliation or, or fealty or loyalty is to Shrimati Radhika. And our relationship with Krishna is that Krishna is Radhika's beloved. We don't aspire for this direct relationship. Gurudev says in his Vilakush Manjali commentary that. For the jivas, it's not possible to attain naika bhav, which means a direct relationship with Krishna like his param, like his beloved. We can attain the position of Radhika's maidservant Manjari, and our relationship with Krishna will be through that relationship with Shrimati Radhika. And there's many interesting details about that. We hear how sometimes Shrimati Radhika may ask Krishna to 
see the gopis, gopis in Manjlis even. But even though this may occur occasionally, still the stay bhav with the fixed attachment of the Manjlis is towards Shimati Radhika. They have greater affection towards Shimati Radhika than for Krishna. So this is said. But it also says, we'll discuss this more in detail, but we'll integrate this class with uh, Vilakus Manjli. So it said that the gopis, especially the manjris, if they aren't, if they don't have some transcendental calm or desire that is ultimately directed towards Krishna, like Krishna Rati, then they cannot be under the category of gopis. The gopis are under Kamanuga Bhakti. Kamanuga means they have this attraction towards Krishna ultimately, Kamanuga Bhakti. They have this kind of transcendental desire in their ras of Madhurya Ras. They're also in Madhurya Ras, which is the mellow of romantic love. But that desire of theirs is fulfilled through their relationship to Shrimati Radhika. We heard this story that Radhika sent one gopi to ask Mani Manjari to meet with Krishna, that Krishna was inviting her to a kunj and Radhika was sending her. And then she responded that if I am more happy with Radhika meeting Krishna and the experience of Radhika meeting Krishna, then direct meeting, then why would I go for a lesser happiness? I'm completely satisfied by this higher kind of happiness for me. So she had no desire for this. I said, therefore, Radhika completely trusts the Manjuris because they're completely one pointedly devoted to her. So, anyhow, in this verse, Venum Kara Niparitam, we see that Shmati Radhika is ultimately supreme. <laughs> Sometimes we see pictures of Radhika like at the feet of Krishna offering flowers at his feet but this is not so much our mood that our mood is more Radhe Jai Jai Madhava Daiti Radha is victorious we like in this verse that Krishna faints by the power of Shimati Radhika's sidelong glance there's one other sweet pastime that goes with another verse that we'll learn yasya kadapi vasananchala kelanata dhanyati danya pavanena kritartamani yogindra durgama gatir madhusudana opita syakara the world saves the feet. Yes. So that's another sweet verse that tells a pastime that's similar to this pastime, which is that Krishna is always boasting about this also shows that Radhika is supreme. So it also ties into our Vilakus Manjali. So Krishna is always boasting how powerful he is and how he's defeated so many demons. And then one time he was boasting like this to the Sakis and say, Oh, this is all just like hot air, you know, you're just boasting, but you can't prove anything. We see, we know that Sridham often defeats you in wrestling. Subal also can beat you in wrestling, and you would never be able to defeat our Radhika in wrestling. So therefore, Krishna accepts the challenge. Okay, let's have a wrestling match. And then, in the wrestling match, they chose a place like an arena, and then they went to get prepared. So Radhika dressed like a wrestler. They dressed with like a tight a dhoti like pants kind of style dhoti and then you know the wrestler shirt with the waist belt you know a special turban and Radhika was being prepared by her sakis Lalita was like her coach you know getting her ready for the match you know like a coach is always inspiring fighters telling oh don't worry he doesn't have a chance you know and then the other side Krishna went so they went to different kunjas to prepare Krishna went to another kunj and he was being prepared by Madhumanga Subal and others. Madhumanga was like his coach, you know. And so he also dressed like a wrestler. And then they were preparing for the match. And it said that once Krishna was dressed and Radhika was dressed, and Radhika went to the scheduled place to fight. And Krishna was on his way. But he started becoming like nervous, a little bit apprehensive. Like, you know, he had not wrestled with Srimati Radhika and he was afraid she would defeat him, you know. And it said, as this was happening, that the breeze, see everything in Braj is also like on the side of Srimati Radhika. Even though Krishna is like this, everyone's heart and soul, everyone loves Krishna, but still everyone has more loyalty to Srimati Radhika than Krishna. Because Radhika is like the fountainhead of their love. And their love for Krishna goes through the fountainhead of Shrimati Radhika. Like we heard about the, she is the divine son of love. 
And all the Brajwasis love Krishna is coming from the rays of her love for Krishna. It's a reflection of her love for Krishna that has come into different rasas and different moods in order to her for her to be able to expand her service to Krishna, she appears in the forms of all the Brajbasis with all these different moods of love. So it's all a manifestation of her expression of love for Krishna. So they all, we see even the, the air is helping Shumati Radhika. So it said that the Bhavan Devata, the wind god, he bashed by the cloth of Shumati Radhika, Yasyakadapi Vasananchala and took the fragrance of the cloth of Srimati Radhika, not just the cloth, but Srimati Radhika's own divine form, and then carried that to where Krishna was on his way. And I said, Krishna smelled that fragrance of Srimati Radhika, and then he began to shake even more. <laughs> and he, was, he'd become, he became like intoxicated and overwhelmed by this. And as he entered the arena, he was shaking so much, Madhumanga was telling him, why are you doing this? Baba, you have to, you're so courageous, you've defeated so many demons, you've defeated Putana and Trinavarta, and Bakasura and Agasura and Kaliya. And, you know, you cannot even wrestle with this young girl. <laughs> so then as they were preparing to fight, that Pavan Devata continued to help Shumati Radhika side and Krishna finally fell senseless. Without even Radhika laying a finger on him, he was defeated. So this, so this other verse, Venum Karan, is similar to this. It's saying that simply by the sidelong glances, like when Krishna was coming before, then he smelled the fragrance coming from the body of Shumati Radhika. He was coming closer and was he was beginning to like shake a little bit. But then when he came nearby, then Yasyaka Taksha Sadagata Vimorchitasya. Then Radhika began to strike him with the arrows of her sidelong glances. And then by that Krishna completely fainted. His peacock feather fell down. His peacock feather is also like the sign of Krishna's power, you know. And then when the peacock feather falls down, then it's like it's a very dangerous condition for Krishna. And then his flute, another sign of his power. His flute also fell. And then his Pitambar, which is like lightning that also slipped and fell and then Krishna himself fell down senseless and Radhika was declared victorious and then they are all saying Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Gopula Taruni Mandala At that time all the gopis began to clap and dance and sing Radhe Jaya Jaya and all the suckers were very shy and put their faces down. So in this battle of love Radhika is always victorious. <clears throat> we see this in these pastimes so verses are very sweet and this is the not just the mood of the Gaudiyas but we see in Braj how everyone is glorifying Srimati Radhika everywhere you can see Radhe Radhe and everywhere everyone speaks Radhe Radhe so everyone is always remembering and praying to Srimati Radhika and this is what we're learning in this Radha Tattva verses we're learning the glory of Srimati Radhika generally in other religions they they worship maybe like Brahman some impersonal absolute power that is creating everything or some impersonal spirit or if they worship some form of God then they think of God just as like masculine there's no counterpart of the feminine or it's very um, imbalanced we see especially in the <clears throat> Judeo-Christian tradition it's mostly towards God the Father and there's some hint of feminine the feminine spirit, but it's very hidden. But in in the Gaudiya tradition, and in Vaish, even in Vaishnavism, most Vaishnavas, some Pradayas, they mostly worship like Vishnu or an avatar, like Ram, and they also respect Sita or Lakshmi, but not like on the same level as Narayan. They want Lakshmi. People worship God, but they actually want Lakshmi or his. She is the goddess of fortune, she provides wealth and everything. So they think, most people, they actually want Lakshmi more than Krishna, or more than Vishnu. But at the same time, they're not, they don't properly honor and respect her. They want her only so that they can enjoy her. Why do they want Lakshmi? So they can have money to enjoy with, to spend. They don't want to serve and, or use her for Krishna's service, for Narayan's service. So therefore, they don't get so much benefit to this. But in our line, we understand 
the glory of Shrimati Radhika, who is Krishna's, as you would say, feminine counterpart. And we learn that we should aspire to pray and, and we should aspire to serve her. We don't beg for anything from her like, Oh Radhika, give me a good wealth, give me a nice family. That's why I said Radhika is not externally like Goddess of Fortune. If you want material things, then you can pray to Lakshmi, you can pray to Durga. Don't disturb Radharani with these things. From her, Lakshmi, Durga, everyone manifests. But still, we don't pray to Radhika for material things. <clears throat> we only pray, Tam Radhikam Paricharami Karadasena. When can I serve her with great love in my eternal rasa, my eternal mellow of service and love? <clears throat> this is the glory of our line that the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself, Krishna, becomes controlled by the sidelong glances of Shrimati Radhika. Not only that, but by the fragrance coming from her cloth. Yeah, this one. We, should, we can learn this one after this. Yeah, we can learn this one. We can start it after this. All right, so then we didn't discuss this other verse, Maragalla Kandana Mamasi. So we talk about that history a bit also, because it also ties into what we're learning. So Jayadev Goswami was married to Padmavati. We won't tell the whole story, but they worshipped Radha Madhavadidi. And he was always writing these very sweet verses about the pastimes of Radha Krishna and Braj, especially in this Gita Govinda. It said one time when he was writing, how did, this, how did the sadhus write? They write by inspiration. <clears throat> it's not like some mental concoction or like some intellectual performance. They're always chanting and praying and meditating and whatever is inspired in their heart, they write down. And that becomes like their samadhi basya. Their writings that come from their internal meditation. So when he was contemplating on these pastimes, he one verse came into his heart, and that verse was this one that we just learned: "Smara Garla Kandana Mama Sirasi Mandanam Dehi Pada Palamudaram." And what it says is that Krishna has fallen at the feet of Shrimati Radhika, placed his crown at her feet, and he is begging her: "Smara Garla Kandana Mama Sirasi Mandanam." He's saying, "Placing my head at your feet, making your feet the ornament of my head. I'm praying to you." Now, Smara Garla Kandanam, I'm burning and being defeated by this fire of Cupid, Smara. Garla means the poison. So the poison of Cupid has broken me, Kandanam. Smara Garla Kandanam, Mama Sirasi Mandanam, therefore I'm offering my head at your feet. Dehi Pada Palava Mudharam. I'm placing your magnanimous lotus feet upon my head, praying for your mercy. So this verse appeared in his heart. And he was hesitant to write it down because generally this was also, he came hundreds of years before Mahaprabhu also. And most people even at this time, they worshipped Krishna and they thought Radhika is like one of Krishna's gopis, okay. But they didn't realize the glory and the position of Shrimati Radhika. It was still somewhat hidden. Even though it's not hidden, it's apparent, but many people, again, like we said, they are focused on Krishna. Or they focus on Narayan and they think Lakshmi is just okay, his servant or his devotee. They don't realize the position of Shrimati Radhika. This is the same problem in Rasa Lila. The other gopis didn't understand the position of Shrimati Radhika and didn't come under her shelter, therefore, they can't really get Krishna Prem to the highest extent until they come under her shelter. So Jayadev realized this verse, but he was thinking, should I write it down? Because this is showing that. Krishna is falling at the feet of Shrimati Radhika. How is it possible that Vadameshwara, the Supreme Lord, the Master, the Controller is falling at the feet of Shrimati Radhika? How is it possible? So he was hesitating to write it down, thinking, what will people say? And is this right or not? So every day he would write and in the afternoon he would go to the Ganga to take bath and to worship the Ganga and then come back and have lunch with Padmavati. After she, she would cook an offer to Radha Madhava, the deities they had, they lived in the forest area near Champakhatta in Navadvip. So he left and he said, I'll come back soon. So right after he left, he said only a few minutes later, it seemed like he returned. 
and he went to Madhavi and said, "Oh, please give me my uh, my writing." Like they would write on palm leaves, and they would use like quill with different kinds of natural inks made from minerals and dyes, natural dyes. So then she brought him his palm leaves that he was writing the Git Govinda on, and he wrote down this verse: "Madagalla kandanam, mama sirasi mandanam, dehi pada palam udharam." And then he said, "Okay, now I'm very hungry. Let's have prasadam." So he had just finished offering to Radha Madhav. So then he sat down and she fed him very nicely. And then he laid down to take rest and she started to massage him. And then she went out to take prasadam herself. She said like a chaste wife, she serves the husband, feeds the husband, and then she'll take prasadam afterwards. So she sat down to take prasadam in the other room, and then she heard Jayadev Goswami, someone coming back into the ashram. She thought, who's coming? She heard the sound of someone walking in. And then she looked and it was Jayadev. And she thought, oh, Jayadev, I just, he's just resting now. She quickly went and looked in his bed, but he wasn't there. She was very confused. And then Jayadev Goswami came and saw that she was sitting, almost finished, having finished her prasada. And he was very confused, like, normally he comes back and then she gives him prasadam he takes and she takes. It's considered very inauspicious for the wife to take before the husband because it's her dharma to serve. People now, we think this is very controversial, but before this wasn't controversial. It said like dharma patni, a religious wife, she, she pleases God, it said, through her service also to her husband. If she serves with great love and loyalty and devotion, it said that she can perfect her life through that. And any good, pious results that the husband will get if he goes to heaven, she will also get. She, any sadhan he performs, she gets half of the benefit also. She gets half of everything. And Madhvacharya actually says that she can gain perfection through with serving the husband with loyalty and love and devotion. That one can gain perfection by that. One can control stop time even. There's many pastimes about the power of a chaste woman's devotion. There's a, another pastime we'll tell another time. Said one time, oh, it's, it's, to do, we'll tell it tomorrow, okay? It's a very interesting story. Said the power of a wife's devotion to her husband can stop time even. <laughs> it's a very interesting pastime. We'll tell it tomorrow. So anyhow, Madhvacharya said, oh, you can get perfection through that. Now it depends. See, in all our line, ultimately, we are like we're only serving Krishna, you know. And if it's very rare, also in this day and age, to find a qualified husband. <laughs> but anyhow, this pastime is there. So Jayadev was a little confused. So it wasn't like he was angry. It's not angry that oh, why have you eaten before me? But he was a little bit confused, you know, because it's not normal. And then he asked her, oh, what's happened? You've already taken prasad. She said, what do you mean? You came back like 20 or 30 minutes ago. I thought, like you said, oh, I had to write something. You, you came back and said, I have, I forgot to write one verse and I'll go to Ganga later. And so you wrote it down, you took prasad, you took rest, and then you disappeared. So then Jayadev Goswami became like overwhelmed with emotion. And he said, oh, this must have been no other than Krishna. He said, bring me that, my palm leaves, my book, and he saw that there, that verse that had been inspired in his heart, that he was afraid to write, had been written down in a very beautiful script, you know, very beautifully it had been written down. And Krishna himself had come, written it down, taken prasadam, you see, and then left. And so Jayadev Goswami began to weep in, like, ecstasy. And then he told Padmavati, you're so fortunate, Krishna himself came in a hidden way to write this down, to show that how great is Shrimati Radhika to show his love for Shrimati Radhika he himself came and you're so fortunate that you saw him so he said they have such a sweet relationship with Radha Madhav that sometimes Radha Madhav there's another story that one time he was fixing the roof like putting they, their roofs they lived in like a thatched hut so they would put straw or different kinds of paddy on the roof to protect it from rain dripping through or things like that. So one time he was helping and Padmavati was passing, he was on the roof and Padmavati was passing him the 
straw. But then something happened where she left for a while, she was busy with something else and he didn't notice. And then someone kept passing it to him and he finished the whole roof. And then she came back and said, oh, you finished it already, I had to go. He said, what do you mean? You were there passing it to me the whole time. He said, no, it wasn't me. And then they went and they saw on the altar, Radharani had some pieces of straw in her hair. <laughs> Radhika herself had gone and done this. But said, we see, if someone has like real bhakti, pure bhakti, then the relationship with Radha and Krishna becomes very sweet and also informal. It's not like, oh, you are God and I am your servant. They don't even have this mood that you are God. They just feel like I am, you know, in the branch. If you're in Sakya Ras, you just think Krishna is my dear friend. If you're in Madhuri Ras, Krishna is my beloved. And if you're in this Manjali Bhav, you think Krishna is the beloved of my Radhika. You don't think he is Badamesh for God. You, and you, you always see, oh, Krishna is defeated simply by the sidelong glance of my Shmati Radhika. If anyone is God, Shmati Radhika is God. <laughs> but they don't think that also. So they have this very sweet, loving relationship. They don't even think Krishna is God. Krishna also doesn't think he's God. It's like a president in his office. Everyone say, oh, Mr. President, Mrs. President. <laughs> but at home, his child doesn't say Mr. President. At home, it said, Gurudev tells this story. Prabhupada also tells this story that it was like a president or prime minister. And everyone is always like, oh, very eager to honor him and to meet with him. And oh, Mr. President, this, Mr. President, that. But when he came home, one time, one of his like friends or ministers also came to his home for like a dinner or something and he saw that when he came like he invited someone to his home right and when this person came they saw that he was crawling around on all fours with his uh, grandson on his back whipping him saying faster faster <laughs> and he was playing like this like a horse so in Braj, even though Krishna is the supreme absolute truth, Ishvara Parama Krishna, the Lord, the controller of all controllers, Brahma in millions of forms is offering pranam, Brahma the creator, in millions of forms is offering pranam to Krishna. One pastime, Shiva is worshipping Krishna, all the other gods are coming from Krishna and worship Krishna. But yet in Braj, Krishna has to carry the sakas on his shoulders when they defeat him in wrestling. And Krishna is always, it's said that Krishna dances for the gopis, when he's a little boy and they say, oh, we'll give you ladus, dance very sweetly. You're a very good dancer. So they dance and then they say, oh, we don't have any ladus yet, so we can count how many ladus we need to give you by putting these cow dung dots in your head. So they decorate Krishna with the alka dots of cow dung and then they get Krishna to dance very sweetly. So this is the relationship in Braj. And I said that Krishna more appreciates the chastising words of the gopis or the abusive words of the gopis than all the prayers of the Vedas. Said Gopir, uh, that when the gopis abuse Krishna with harsh words, this abusive words of the gopis is more relishable for Krishna than all the prayers of the Vedas. So then we'll just tell how this story came about, Smaragalla Kandanam. What's the origin of this story? Because every verse like this has a corresponding pastime, or many pastimes. So when Jaidev Goswami wrote this, it appeared in his heart, but what was the pastime? So it said that when Krishna, after Brahma Vimohan Leela, Brahma stole all the calves, all the sakas, and then Krishna took on all their forms. And for one year, Krishna assumed all the forms of the cowherd boys and all the calves that Brahma had stolen and hidden in the cave. It's a long pastime for people who don't know. We can discuss it later, but we know this pastime, right? And so for one year, Krishna was all the sakas and calves. And then the sages in Braj, like Gotama, uh, Yagyavalka, Harid, also Purnamasi, they all announced that this year is the most auspicious year to get married. For all the girls, they should be all given in marriage this year, even if they are just infants. Their marriage should be fixed. In India, the custom is that in marriage, uh, you'll get married in young age, but then they won't live together immediately. Or if the girl lives in the house, she'll just be like a assistant or helper in the house. They don't have this relationship yet. But they'll still fix the marriage in young age so that it helps preserve like the chastity of boys and girls. 
So this is, was the custom before. We see Bhaktinur Thakur was married when he was very young, like a young boy. His wife was five years old. Bhaktinur Thakur writes in his biography, we published this, he said, our marriage was arranged like the marriage of dolls. You know, when, you, when kids will sometimes do like a play marriage between their different dolls. And he said, we didn't have any idea what was happening. We were just like little kids. And he said, my sister was there also, and she was like arranging and helping arrange everything. He said it was like, it was like a, 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 like a children playing together. And then she didn't come to his home till she was like a teenager, much later. So in Brad, sometimes it's arranged like this. So it said the gopis, everyone was told that you should be married this year. So then they arranged, then so many people had to get married, they arranged one place to do all the sacrifices, the yagyas. And they arranged this at Govinda Kund, you know, on the big side of Govardhan Parikrama, Govinda Kund, which is right near Govardhan. So they started doing yagyas there and said every day hundreds of gopis were getting married, hundreds and thousands. And there were all these, each, each marriage had a separate fire yagya, a separate priest, all the relatives there. We can imagine the scene, you know? Thousands and thousands of the relatives, and then everyone's making feasts together, and everyone is very ecstatic because weddings are naturally very festive. So it was like a continual festival going on for the whole year. And it said that everyone was getting married, to all the Sakas were getting married, but no one chose Krishna. <laughs> Krishna was very sad, you know, thinking that in one hand, all his friends are getting married, and it shows that, oh, the parents are choosing the other Sakas. Sometimes Krishna tells the gopis, like a Dan Gati. Dan Gati happens before Govinda Kund. A Dan Gati, Krishna takes tax from the gopis, right? Krishna takes tax from the gopis at Dan Gati. He says, oh, I am the king of Vrindavan, in Braj. You have to give me tax. He said, how are you the king of Vrindavan? He said, oh, she's, they said, Brinda, Vrindavan is the property of Brinda. He said, Brinda is my wife. And any property of the wife is the property of the husband. Therefore, it's all my property, you have to give me tax. If you don't give me tax, I won't let you pass. Dangati is a very narrow passage, and he stopped there with all his mafia, all the sakas with their sticks. So you have to give tax. What butter, ghee, trikan, kheer, everything. So they said, oh, Brinda is your wife. They called Brinda. And Brinda said, Krishna is my wife. And she started laughing, you know, like slapping her leg, laughing. How is it possible? No girl in Braj wants to marry Krishna. And no parent in Braj would give their girl to Krishna. That's only like, like craziness just to think about that. Krishna, everyone knows Krishna is a very bad character. He's very naughty. He's a thief. He's very dark. You know, he's, he's very restless, chanchal. No one would marry Krishna or even think about it. So in this way, anyhow, Krishna said, I don't care. They say, might is right. If you want to go past, you have to pay me tax. <clears throat> so that's one past in there. So we see that in Govinda Kun, no one was directly selecting Krishna to be married. And I said, another reason is that Krishna didn't have his Brahmin thread ceremony yet. Suddenly, if you, have to be, if you want to be married, first you have to get the Brahmin thread ceremony, which is for anyone from the Vaishya caste or Kshatriya Brahmin caste. Before their marriage, they have to get the this Yagya Pavitra. It's called the Brahmin thread. So Krishna didn't have this also. That's another reason he didn't get married. So on one hand, Krishna didn't get married by anyone. But on the other hand, Krishna is very tricky. He knew. Krishna thought, no one wants to directly marry me. In Braj, everyone follows Padagira. So no one wants to directly marry him. So he thought, okay, I'll become all the Sakas and then I'll marry all the gopis. If they don't want to select me, then I'll do it by trick, hook or by crook. By hook or by crook, they have to, they'll marry me. <clears throat> so he said, in this way, indirectly, Krishna married all of the gopis. All the gopis internally they love Krishna, but externally they won't be able to. They won't say it. Said if you say it directly, then it becomes less powerful. Or you say I love you, then it loses its power. Said you should keep it hidden like camphor in your heart. If you open camphor, then the fragrance leaves. So they keep it closed inside their heart, and they express it through parakiras, and they will always like directly show Krishna that they're not interested. They're always tease and abuse him, you know. So Krishna ended up marrying all the gopis by taking the forms of the sakas. And then Radhika, one time, she was witnessing 
all these fire yagas going on, all these marriages being performed. I'm thinking it was something was funny, you know, something was strange. Said dal mein kuch kala. In Hindi they say something was wrong with the dal, <laughs> something black. Or like they say in English, the phrase is uh, something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Radhika was sensing something funny. She was looking, who are all these people? Who are all these suckers? Then she realized, oh, this is all just Krishna. Krishna in disguise, he is so desirous of meeting with all the gopis and he's marrying all of them at once. And he, yet he always says that he only loves me. And I see here that not only is he like in front of me, he's marrying millions of gopis right under my nose, trying to trick me. And oh, just every day he's telling me, I only love you. I don't know anyone else. I don't have a relationship with anyone else. And yet he's marrying everyone. And he's not doing it openly. He's doing it like, we see in a relationship, if there's honesty or openness, then the relationship will be good. But if they're like lying to each other or doing something without letting each other know, and then the lover finds out, then they'll be very upset. Right? If there's like a loving relationship and then they, without them telling, them, or even they go and meet with somebody else and then try to hide it, you know? So Krishna is in this position that he had, was now marrying all the other gopis, like millions of gopis. Were all the also not only Radhika's group, Sapaksha, Tatashta, Vipaksha, those against Radhika's group also. He's marrying everybody. So Radhika saw this and she then went and hid. And when Krishna afterwards was trying to find Radhika, he couldn't find her. So he asked, where is she gone? So then he found that after from Govinda Kund, if you go a little bit past Govinda Kund, you come to one place now called Mukutsila. And there, there's a beautiful rock, like a seat, right next to Govardhan. And in that rock, you can see at the foot, there's like a, like an imprint, of like a crown or something. So it said that Krishna heard from the gopis that Radhika was there in Man, like in some mood of anger. And Krishna went there and began to plead with her for forgiveness. And she wasn't budging, you know, not at all, like moving in her Man. He was thinking what to do and then he began to weep and lament. I said at that point then Krishna bowed his head at the feet of Shimadhi Radhika, placed her feet on his head and prayed, Smaragalla Kandanam, Mama Sirisi Mandanam, Dehi Bada Palavamudaram. Oh Radhika, please remove this poison of Cupid from my heart that is increasing more and more by your man. And please be merciful to me and accept me. So I said at that point Shimadhi Radhika smiled, placed her feet on his head. And there's more that go on, goes into that pastime actually. Krishna then, if you go from Mukutsila across to the other side of the Prikama Mark, there's a place called Apsara Kund and Naval Kishor Kund. So Krishna bathed there and became a beautiful Gandharva. And Radhika also bathed and became Gandharvika. And from there, Gandharvika Giridhari appeared. So this is another pastime, which is a bit late now, so we'll stop here. But we will talk about it more. Panchakalpatri Pesakripas Nivevishapitanam Bhavne Bhavishnu 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 B